track what's going on when it comes to numbers. Mahindra Life Space Q1 earnings, are they on track to attain their FY28 pre-sales? What is the outlook when it comes to their fundraise plans and numbers? Amit Kumar Sinha is the MD and CEO of Mahindra Life Space now joining us on ET Now. Thanks so much. Uh, let's begin with numbers because it's been largely a pretty promising set and your pre-sales target as well that you shared earlier for FY25 is 2,500 crores out of which 1,000 odd crores I understand you've done in the first quarter. So will you be revisiting the guidance? Uh, thank you for having me. I think uh, while we are keeping external targets what we had announced, but our aspiration is to definitely uh, beat that. Uh, and first quarter, as you've seen, has been pretty exciting for us. Uh, this is the second quarter in a row we have crossed 1,000 crore. But this is a seasonal business, as you know. So there will be dips in quarter two, then recovery, because it's linked to launches that we have. So quarter two will have fewer launches. Quarter three, quarter four, we have exciting launches planned in Mumbai, Pune, and Bangalore. And Bangalore. So our hope would be to beat the uh, guidance that we have given, and we have a promising start so far read into the impact what the new um, budget uh, indexation changes would have on the real estate uh, market and especially for real estate investors yeah i think we are discussing that you know i think we, we got uh, just two days back the uh, some of the uh, changes especially related to indexes will have an impact but as we are uh, trying to understand it will have more of impact on older properties um, which have been uh, sold many years back and then they'll come in the resale market. You know, our business is primarily new launches, but, you know, it'll always have a uh, cascading effect if, uh, uh, if there are uh, more taxes or more perceived uh, challenges in the indexation. Um, our hope is that uh, the change that we typically say in the resale uh, has an impact on new launches because you can actually um, get the tax benefits, you know, if you if you buy a new property. So I'm hoping that people will see when they are selling an old property, upgrading to new one, which tends to be a big part of our uh, new launch sales, that uh, the indexation will not get in the way. It will only help uh, prosper our new new sales launches. So hopefully it will not have a huge impact, but we're still studying the impact and how people will perceive it. Uh how do you see the demand supply dynamics changing because of that? I mean, let's say if I'm an investor, I was getting benefit of indexations. I don't right. get those benefits. There are a lot of old properties which were coming on the market. They may not come on the market. So I'm trying to understand one is the tax side, right. which you've explained. That is affordability. But what about demand and supply of old properties? It may not affect Mahindra, I understand. But in general, if the market changes, then dynamics for you will also change. Correct, correct, correct. And then that's a great question. And that's why I think we'll have to just see how this is perceived. Now, we did some analysis to really understand if, let's say, you have a property which is, let's say, 20 year old uh, and you'll have an indexation benefit, you've gone for 100 to 500, for example, right? Um, the indexation would have given you some lower taxes as a result. You'll have more money in the hand. And if you had uh, wanted to invest, that would have been possible. But your alternate option, as I explained, that you can, if you're buying a new property, you can al always um, offset the gains for the for the new property. Now, how will demand and supply change is a function of uh, the customer segment. So there are typically two customer segments. One is the investment customers and the other end users. I think the end user segment will continue to pursue um, home buying behavior as they have done in the past. In fact, we see inventory come down in each of the major cities that we operate in. So inventory overhang has actually come down compared to first quarter last financial year. My sense is the end users will continue to buy more. The investors will have a view about, hey, do we want to park more funds in this asset class, which has now gone through a slightly higher, uh, let's say, uh, uh, implied overall taxes, or should we look at any other asset class? And that's something that we'll know over the next uh, few months. We don't know the answer as yet. Right, okay. Um, let's also get in a sense as to what your launches are like. Um, it's uh, fallen sharply from what you had done in Q4, at least in the previous quarter. Is seasonality at play on the back of elections or is there actually some slowdown in demand? Uh, it's actually seasonality. You know, it's like a momentum that gets created. So we had... A uh, lot of launches in, at the very fag end of F24. So 
middle to end of March, we got our RERA approvals, which helped us uh, reap the benefits um, of those launches in Q1 of this financial year. Um, and similarly, we have many launches. We have eight to 10 launches planned for this financial year as well. And you'll start to see them come through in quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. Uh, one of our very successful projects was in Kandivali, which we launched uh, in quarter four last financial year. Um, and that was middle of quarter four. Uh, and most of the sales were captured in the previous financial year. We had uh, advancing the launch of that project, Mahindra Vista phase two, to quarter three. All the, all the efforts are underway uh, across Mumbai, Pune, and Bangalore. We'll have an um, exciting set of launches that are planned in the current financial year. And you'll see more action in later part of Q2, uh, but especially in Q3 and Q4. Okay. Um, let you go on that note. Um, thank you so much uh, for uh, taking time out and uh, joining in, giving us uh, a view on your earnings. If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.